the question received was when is M negative? And the answer to that question is if as X increases, Y decreases, M is negative. And the example that we've looked at a few times is a distance. Let's say we're three miles from home, home, and walking home at 2.1 miles per hour. And we want X to be the time spent walking and Y to be distance from home. And we're trying to set up an equation Y equals MX plus B. Yeah. Well, B is our initial distance from home. So three gets plugged in and for B and 2.1 is our rate. So that's going in there, but as time passes, that is to say, as X increases, Y decreases, I'm walking home. Right, so as time passes, this distance is a shrinking. And that's reflected in a negative Y, sorry, a negative M, not a 2.1 X, but a negative 2.1 X. Let's see, that was the first question I received. The second question. Let's do another example. Finding the equation of a line through points. And I mean the specific, the specific thing I was asked about. I was asked about finding B in these equations, but finding B is the last thing one does in these problems. So you kind of have to do the whole problem. You can't just skimp. Let's find the equation of the line through these points. But since this was really the question, let's spend most of our time on finding B and try to go a little quickly through the earlier steps. 
So M is the rise over the run, which huh, wasn't my intention, but I gave us some pretty nice points. The rise and the run are both two. So the slope is one. And now for the question that I was actually asked, now that we know the slope, now that we know that y is one x plus b, how do we find this b? And we remind ourselves that the trick is to take one of these points. It doesn't matter which one, but we're going to plug the x value in for x and the y value in for y. And when we do that, we get an equation where we can solve for B. If we subtract two from both sides, that's three equals B. Yeah. Um, any further questions about, oof, sorry, dizzy spell. Any further questions about that example? Or I should say about the example before it. I mean, I know I'm working kind of quickly because I'm just trying to answer a few specific questions before we move into our lecture. The last question I received is slightly more open-ended. But I received a question, this is related to word problems. And I got a question about finding X and Y when the values are far away from each other. And that's, um, that's contextualized what I think this is asking. Here's made like an example from the homework was something like this. We're sending a shirt. When you sell 50 shirts you make 500 dollars when you sell 70 shirts, you will make 800 dollars. I'm not going to actually find y equals mx plus b, but the the question, I think, is that in this example, each of these sentences is just clearly giving us a point. This is the point 50 comma 500. This is the point 70 comma 800. The X and the Y coordinates are sitting right next to each other. Um, compare this to, let's say, x 
is temperature in degrees Celsius. Y is temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. What am I, I spelling? Fahrenheit. Oh, that's terrible. Let's, let's fix that. Um, and I say water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and zero degrees Celsius and water boils at or at 212, right? 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, now my X and my Y values aren't sitting next to each other. I mean, let's think this through. X is temperature in degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Let's correct that. X is temperature in degrees Celsius. So this is an X value. And this is an X van. No, I need to think a little more about it. I, I thought this would be a good example, but it's not really answering the question. I need to think a little about this more and I'll come back to it tomorrow. Sorry about that. I sort of thought that was it, and then I realized it wasn't. But I will answer that question. I'll also get you some stuff back. This is certainly accumulating, but I'll get it back to you while you're working on your written class work. So that's... Um, Could someone uh, shut that door for me? Yeah. Let's talk today about linear inequalities. A linear expression is an expression of the form MX plus B. And a linear inequality is what you get if you have true expressions like that, say mx plus b and nx plus c. And they are separated by a less than symbol or a greater than symbol, or a less than or equal to symbol, or a greater than or equal to symbol. And we'd like to be able to solve such inequalities. I mean, questions of when one quantity is bigger than another quantity show up all the time in kind of real life. So this is our target for today, is solving these linear inequalities. And to a large extent, solving linear inequalities is the same as solving equality. 
is we can add the same thing to both sides of an equality. We can multiply both sides of an equality by a constant. There's just one sort of difference that we need to be aware of. If we're solving these linear inequalities. So, I mean concretely something like this. I want to know when 2x plus 3 is greater than 5x plus 4, something like that. And I'd say that we solve these inequalities, bless you, basically like equalities. There's just one kind of important difference. Let's qualify that. One, we can add or subtract. the same thing from both sides of an inequality. And this is always going to be sort of step one of solving these inequalities. We're going to use this fact that we can add or subtract the same thing to both sides to get the x's on one side and the constants on the other. So at the moment, our x's and our constants are all mixed up. We've got x's and constants together over here. We've got x's and constants together over here. We want to unmix them. We want x's together and we want constants together. And we have kind of two options for unmixing our x's and our constants. We could bring our x's over to the left and our constants over to the right, or vice versa. We could take our x's over to the left and our constants over to the right. And I'm going to make an executive decision here. I'm going to say that we're going to bring our x's to the right and our constants to the left. And let's see how that works in practice. 2x plus 3 is greater than 5x plus 4. And I've said that we're going to bring our x's over to the right. Maybe that's a little cryptic. What do I mean by that? Well, we can add or subtract the same thing from both sides of an inequality. And if we subtract away those two x's, then voila, 
just as I want it to happen. Now our X's are all on the right-hand side of that data body. What about our constants? I said we wanted our constants on the left. Well, just like we could subtract that 2x, we could subtract that 4 and get negative 1 is greater than 3x. Is everyone with me so far? So this is using sort of rule one, let's call it. Rule two, if you haven't seen this before, might contain a surprise. Because if we're working with equalities, we can add or subtract, we can multiply, we can divide. But rule two has a caveat. We can multiply or divide both sides by a positive. Number. When you're working with equalities, you don't have anything like this. You just have the statement that you can multiply or divide both sides of an equality by a number. So this is sort of a feature of inequality. It's something that doesn't show up in equalities. But this feature of inequalities allows us to finish up here. Negative one is greater than three X. Three is a positive number. You can divide both sides by three. And notice that when you solve an inequality, you get a range of values. We don't get x equals something here. We get that x is less than negative one third. So instead of getting a single value, we get an infinite number of values. Every number less than one third is a solution to this inequality. And we'll talk about writing down our solutions in just a moment. But does everybody buy what's come so far? Does this make sense to everybody? Well, we could stop here, but this is kind of desperately begging a question. I say we can multiply or divide both sides by a positive number. If we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, what happens? Say that again. I'm going to become positive if you divide by a number. Both sides by a negative. Oh, that was stupid. Sorry. Oh, don't. No, no. I thought you were asking, I thought you were asking if, it was, uh, if they both were negative. Um, so. If you multiply 
were divided by a negative number, what that does is it flips the inequality. So suppose we have negative three is greater than, or I'm sorry, suppose we have negative three times X is greater than or equal to nine. We want to get X by itself, meaning we need to get rid of that negative three. And this is multiplication. To get rid of multiplication, we need division. So we ought to be dividing both sides by negative three. What that does, as I say, is flip the direction the inequality is pointing. So greater than or equal to flips around and becomes less than or equal to. X is less than or equal to negative three. And using these rules, this and this, and this, you can solve any linear inequality. If you just follow these steps, you get the x's on the one side and the y's on the other. And once you've done that, there will be a multiplication or a division to finish things up. If we wanted to look at another example, 2x minus 4 is greater than x plus 7. We'll get the x's either on the left or on the right, and we'll get the constants either on the left or on the right. And it doesn't matter which um, is which. So we can either subtract this 2x over to the right, or let me, sorry, I know it's easier for me to erase stuff here than maybe for you. Let's Let's turn that two to a three. Um, we can either subtract this three X over to the right, or we can subtract this X over to the left. And it doesn't matter which we do, but just speaking personally, I'd prefer working with positive X's. So if we subtracted this 3x over here, we'd get a negative 2x, which isn't the end of the world. We can deal with a negative 2. But it might be easier to subtract the x's over to the left. And then we'll get a positive 2x is greater than 7. If we've decided the x's go on the left, the constants have to go on the right. Two X is greater than 11. 
And now our division step, and because two is positive, our division step isn't flipping any sides. We get 11 divided by two, which if you preferred decimals would be five and a half. X is greater than 5.5 from my point of view is a fine way to write an answer. It's perfectly clear what you're saying, but there is alternative notation for this. Let's just touch. Or maybe, maybe I don't want to do it. Maybe I want to save interval notation until chapter 3.2 when we're going to use it. Yes, I want to save interval notation for another time when we're going to use it a little more heavily. For now, this is a perfectly fine way of writing your answer that X is greater than something or that X is less than or equal to something or whatever you would get. And in the in class work, you can ignore the bit of the instructions that talk about interval notation. We'll, as I say, get to that as part of another section. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be back for it. This is also yours? Yeah. Oh, I don't need more. Yeah, but you just saw me the picture of the Thank you. 
Sorry, I thought I was going to return homework, but somehow all of my sections are mixed together. I'll see if I can sort this out, but you might have to wait till tomorrow. Oh, I have to disentangle these. For now, I'll just walk around and answer questions. <laughs> 